name is Victor. I'm 77 years old. I spent many of my life, years of life, my life in India. When I came back from India, I decided to do a sculpture park. It was designed as a midlife crisis temple. That's where people go between 33 or 30 and 60 to ask the questions, what am I doing with my life? What do I want to do before I die? What is the purpose of it all? So we designed this garden as a contemplative space for adults. I was ordained as a Buddhist monk in 1980 with the name Bodankur, which translated into English means a Buddha shoot unfolding. In other words, when spring comes and the Bodhi tree puts out new shoots, I am one of these shoots off the Bodhi tree. It's a very nice name. My job was really not to become a traditional Buddhist, but to go in, dig out the essential features and purpose of Buddhism, and then retranslate them and upgrade them for the 21st century. When I was 50, I came back from India, having written a lot of books that no one reads. And uh, one evening I said to myself, I have got to find a different way to present some of my ideas. I waited for a few days and one morning at five o'clock, I had a dream. And in that dream, I saw the complete park. The whole thing was over in two or three minutes. I jumped out of bed, sketched, the sculptures, which are cartoons for the different stages of creativity, of the creative cycle. And I sketched them, took the sketches to India, found a workshop, and over 20 years, the workshop and I together created the, the sculptures. In the park, you see seven sculptures. They are seven stages of a creative cycle. A cycle can be a minute, a second, an hour, 10 years, 20 years, during which one proceeds towards a particular goal. And in each of these stages, one either gets blocked or one moves forward. So when a person is looking at the sculptures, they can see themselves at different stages of development. Some when they are successful, some when they are failures. And in each case, they can reflect upon themselves and understand where they are in the creative cycle, which is their own life. So we start with birth or awakening. We go through separation, indecision, Finally, we achieve enlightenment, nirvana, and then go back to birth again and go through the whole cycle again. This is what people do a million times a day or only once in a lifetime. It is a recursive program. And that is what the sculptures show. They are cartoons that indicate stages in development during a life cycle. Businesses are very different. Uh, some want to be here, some don't want to be here. Some have the capacity for enthusiasm, awe and wonder, like a nine-year-old. They're blown away. Others are locked inside themselves. They can't respond. They don't understand. They don't want them. Others are frightened by what they see. Others are set free by what they see. It varies greatly. Each individual has to figure it out himself. That's why the rule here is that when you come, you come alone, you walk at half speed, and you interact with the sculptures. If that is done properly, the stones begin to speak because the stones are actually part of the observer projected outside. So if the observer sees the sculpture, they're actually looking inside at themselves and then they can allow themselves to open and sometimes it is an extraordinary 
sense of release, of joy, of happiness. Sometimes it's one of anger and frustration. Cannot be predicted. The Buddha lived three, almost 3,000 years ago. His views are dated by 3,000 years. We have to go back as Buddhists and rather than look at Siddhartha, the Buddha, look at Bodhi, knowledge, reinterpret the world as we see it through modern eyes, with modern science, modern physics, evolution theory, and then go back and ask the question, how does suffering, as an example, originate? How do we overcome it? Should we overcome it? Or should we use suffering to allow us to lead more creative, more productive lives? This kind of question the Buddha never asked, but he was living in a different era. People were suffering, they had no out, so he told simple stories that, for instance, greed, hatred and delusion lead to suffering. Well, they do, sometimes, but sometimes they don't. The questions we're asking are much deeper. What purpose, for instance, in relation to suffering, what purpose does suffering have? If you look at Samkhya Yoga, they have the same goal. They want to get rid of suffering. Now, getting rid of suffering is stupid. It is like getting rid of the red light on the traffic junction. Suffering is a great teacher. It's a way we notice that something has gone wrong and we should have another go and do it better. But to get rid of suffering is actually a very stupid idea. At least that's the way I see it. The Nirvana Man, the statue itself, is a copy of an 8th century Sri Lankan deity. The Nirvana Man really is an individual who has found peace and quiet after the storm. Nirvana actually means, in translation, it means uh, no storm. The inner storm is completely subdued. And if you've had a night out or you've had a moment of excitement and you're completely calm and relaxed, peaceful, gentle within, feeling a sense of bliss, that's Nirvana. Now I've got to the stage where the park is finished, people are coming, a lot of people are coming, but it's time to move on. It's a phase in my life which is coming to an end. Now I shall retire back into solitude, close the park. As the Buddha said, whatever is born dies, and whatever is born is subject to conditions. And when the condition changes, then it dies. That's Buddhism in the essence.